All right, so today I want to talk about the new enter key hint attribute. Now, this is something that we can add into form elements. So basically, if you've got an input element or a text area element, some place, something that a user is going to be typing inside of, or if you add content editable to a div or something like that to make it something that the user can type inside of, then we can add this attribute, enter key hint. And as the name would imply, it's something to do with the enter key. This is going to allow us to change the label that shows up on the enter key. So we've got enter, done, go, next, previous, search, and send. These are the available values that we can use inside of here to basically add these labels onto form elements. Now I did a video previously about input mode and you can see the link above to click on and I'll have it in the description as well so you can go and watch that video if you haven't seen that one. But this one, as opposed to the input mode, which controls all of the keys on the keyboard to say, oh, okay, you're doing an email address, that means you're going to need the at sign, or you're typing a URL, you're probably going to want the dot com to show up uh, on Safari. So the values for input mode are going to control which keyboard, the numeric, the text, the email one, which is, whichever is most appropriate. The enter key hint is just going to be changing the label that shows up on that key. Now, I've got a sample form here that I've built with a bunch of inputs where I'm using different input modes and different enter key hints. So we've got next on the name, the email, uh, I've got next on that one as well, the cell phone, done, homepage, which is a URL. Uh, I'm going to use open for that one. Keyword, this one's going to use the search and password, I'm going to have done inside of there. Done usually implies, hey, I'm finished typing. It's usually the last thing in your form. So done hides the keyboard when you click on it and can submit the form. Uh, it hides it so that you can click on a submit button. There is also a send option, as we saw up here, send. So this is going to act like the um, submission of the form as well. Now, viewing these can be a little bit challenging because when you're testing these things on your laptop, like here, I can, in Chrome, toggle device mode. So here it is, this is what it's going to look like on an iPhone, and that's fine, but when I click inside of these things, like I can click and drag to scroll up or down, when I click on these things, I'm still using my laptop keyboard to type this information. Um, in Safari, if I jump into that one, same thing. So here's all the various elements, but as I type, I'm still using my regular keyboard. I'm not seeing those changes. So how do we do this? Well, iOS, we've got the simulator. Um, if you've got uh, Xcode installed, then you can bring up the iOS simulator. But again, here, even with the simulator, this is going to give us a couple of keys down here. So done. All right, I'm done looking at this. So it's going to reveal, hide the keyboard, reveal the submit button. Here, if I click on it, I've just got the previous and next fields. These are like tabs so I can move through the form. So that's not really meeting our needs. Um, Android, if I bring up the Android emulator, so I launched my Android emulator so I could do this. Here we go. Uh, I've got it set up with the skin for the uh, Samsung Galaxy S20. Um, and there is a little bit of a change here. So when I'm going through these different fields, you can see that the key here changes, but it's not using text. It's using these symbols. Um, so this is the search one. This is the send. Um, and I think we've got end and next here, but most of them are showing this same symbol, like jump to the next field. Um, okay, fine, still not great. If I've got an actual device, I can load it up and I can see the changes on my Android device. Or if you have an iPhone, so I've got uh, my iPhone connected here. And then if you've got the QuickTime player, there we go, this is what I've done here. So I have an iPhone 7 connected with USB to my computer. And in the QuickTime player, when you go in here, you, you can say file new movie recording that will bring up the 
controls to record the screen. You can do audio or video. You can do uh, screen recordings. But if you click on the little record button that shows up, you can actually change the source and you can connect to the device that you have connected. So my iPhone, that's what I'm showing right here. And that means when I tap on one of the fields, I'm getting to see the actual keyboard that I'm seeing on the device itself. So not just this bar. Oh, this is the little record button I was talking about. You could use this drop down list to select the connected device. So we've got next. Great. I click on next. Oh, on my actual device, I'll click on next. That's going to submit it. We'll go back. Email still says next. Cell phone. That's the numeric keyboard. Um, with the home, there we have the go. So that changed on the keyboard, the keyboard with search. We can see it changed to search. And then on the password, done was the option. And that's all we have right here. Okay, so iPhone, there it is. Now, if you're wondering about how I got to load this, I used VS Code to uh, launch the live server. And if I jump into VS Code, we have a plugin in here called Live Server. So if you don't have that installed, I highly recommend that you add that. So inside of the extensions, we can find here Live Server. There it is. The Live Server by Ritwick Day. This extension is going to allow us once we have something here, we can right click open with live server that will open this. It'll launch a little web server powered by node and 127.0.0.1 is going to be your IP address and it does it by default over the port 5500. Okay, great. So that's in my browser. And if I jump back to Chrome in here, you can see 127.0.0.1 colon 5500. That's the default. So that's what I have open in Safari as well. 127.0.0.1.5500. But I want to be able to um, launch this on a connected device, not on here. So on my phone. Now the 127.0.0.1, that is whatever device you're on right now. Well, the phone does not have it. Whether it's Android or iOS, it's not going to have it. So I need to find the IP address for my local computer on my local network. And then that's what I can use. Instead of 127.0.0.1, my address was, if we jump back over to QuickTime here, you can see 192.168.2.40. This is the address of, again, my laptop right here. But that's the address externally on my local Wi-Fi network. And if you're ever looking to get that, on Windows, if you open up the terminal, so I'm going to jump over here to the terminal, here we'll clear this out, and I will zoom this in so you can actually read the text. On Windows, it's ifconfig. If you run that command, you'll find out what your address is, or on Mac, we're going to get, or on Linux, ifconfig, or ipconfig. Sorry. IF config on Windows IP config. There we go. <laughs> so scroll back up to the top. You get a lot of information here. IF config on Mac and Linux, IP config on Windows. I always get those two backwards. Um, so here it is in the first little section. You can see INET. 127.0.0.1, this is localhost. This is your address for your local computer. But if we scroll down a little bit further, we'll be able to find here another one of these, INET. And you're going to be looking for something very likely, most likely, starts with 192.168. This is sort of a, an internal network address. And then this number is usually a 1 or a 2, maybe a 3. And then this is the number of my computer on my network locally here. So this address is the exact same as 127.0.0.1. And even if I jumped back over to 
my local copy of Safari, I can do this. I can change the address up in here. I can say 192.168.2.40 colon 5500. And there it is. I'm opening the same web page. It's pointing at the same server. It's just two different numbers pointing to the same place. So if you use this address on an iPhone or an Android phone, whether or not it's connected, as long as it's connected to the same Wi-Fi, you can see this and you can see the keyboard changes. So it's a lot of work just to be able to see these few keyboard changes, but you can test it and see that it is working. Now there, uh, it is a fairly new thing that's been added. So Edge version 79, Chrome since version 77, Safari version 13, Opera 64, iOS Safari 13.7, um, and then Chrome Android, um, I believe it is around the same version. It was around version 81 that it was added in there. Um, so shortly after it was in the desktop browser. But we have this now. It's supported. So adding it is not going to cause any problems for you. You can add this attribute into all your form elements with one of these values. And even if it's an old browser, it'll just be ignored if it's not supported. But you're adding in that extra little bit of support to make the experience for the user a little bit nicer. Uh, so combine that with the input mode for a much better mobile experience for your users. All right, so I hope that helps you out. Uh, hopes that hope that gives you some information that helps you out in the future. Uh, if you found it useful, please share it or subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.